I hope that you're all well. In the following video, I will show you how I edit my Blue Hour shots using Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's part of a course that I have on Udemy about shooting the Blue Hour, aptly named Shooting the Blues. I love the Blue Hour. It's by far my most favourite photographic genre, and in the course I will show you how to plan and execute a stunning Blue Hour shot. From the equipment you need, through planning and shooting, all the way through to the editing process that you see in this video. If you want to shoot the blues, check out the link in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video on Blue Hour editing, I would love to see a thumbs up or even better a subscription. If you have any questions on shooting the Blue Hour, feel free to ask me in the comments. So with that, let's get into it. So here we are in Lightroom and we have the two Opera House shoots that we've got, the low wide angled shot of the Opera House and the light trail of the Opera House. What we're going to do is work on the low angle shot first. So we select the first image and the last image holding shift and left clicking. And that selects all five in the sequence. We now right click somewhere on the selected images and we go to Photo Merge HDR. We'll just have to wait a little moment and what will happen is that image will pop up. If we select the ghost amount to none, we'll just wait for that to happen. I'll just talk you through the settings here. First of all, auto align we do not need to set on and the reason for that is that we've shot on a tripod. Auto align will try and correct images that have been shot, uh, for example, handheld and align them all so they look identical. We've shot on a tripod, we don't need to, to worry about that. However, auto settings we will leave on. Uh, this means that Adobe's Lightroom will try and work out the best exposure for the image when it merges all five of them together. Deghost is uh, an interesting little tool in that it will attempt to remove objects that have moved during the five shot sequence. So if we zoom in here for example, we have Deghost off at the moment and you can see there are some blurred people that have moved through the shot. If I now put Deghost on and we'll put it on high, we'll wait a second for Lightroom to do its work. And you can see on the high mode, the people that were on the zebra crossing here have basically disappeared completely. It's a very powerful tool for removing people in images. Now, one caveat is that if you've got foliage in the shot that's, say, been moving in the wind, leaves that have been moving in the wind, then what can happen is they can become very strange looking ghost effects on those. So you need to, you know, just check in if you, these are fine because they are quite a long way away from the camera, but if you've got leaves that are quite close in the shot, uh, you might find some strange effects. Overall, I think this looks pretty good. You can actually show the de-ghost overlay here and that will actually show you the areas where the de-ghosting has occurred. And you can see that all these areas around here, there has been some sort of motion between the various images of the bracket and Lightroom has attempted to remove them. So we'll just switch that off. We're happy with that particular image. We'll now click on Merge and we'll just wait for Lightroom to do its thing. And there we go. And the first thing you see is that right at the end of the sequence, Lightroom has popped up the new image. Now, if we look closely at this image, looking at the file name down here, it's been given the suffix HDR and DNG. And the reason for that is what's actually happened here is Lightroom has merged all five of our Fuji RAW files into one extremely large HDR merge, and it's a RAW. Up until a couple of years ago, you weren't able to create HDRs that were raw files, but now in Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom, the final files are raw, giving us a lot more definition and high dynamic range to work with. And if we click open that image, you can see it's a pretty good looking image. Everything looks pretty nice. Haven't quite got the blur in the sky that we had hoped for, but uh, it's more or less acceptable and overall it looks a very nice image. So now it's time to head over to the develop module and see what we can do with this image. And the first thing we're going to do is change the color. As you can see it's a very sort of orangey red yellow color and it doesn't look natural to my eye. It doesn't look like a good blue hour shot. We have a great tool in Lightroom that can very quickly correct the color for us. It's this little tool here that's found in the color tab of the basic section and if we click on it what we need to do is find a neutral part of the image. Now, 
I know from this particular shot that the tarmac of the road was a reasonable color of gray. So if we click on that, instantly we get this beautiful, beautiful image looking so much more natural with the blues punching out and the, the color of the opera house punching out against that blue. It looks so much better. So what we can now do is I think that the opera house is a yellow stone building. So we can actually increase the color temperature a little bit just to add a little bit yellowness back into that opera house. And I think that looks good. What we can do now is check our histogram. And as you can see, we've got warnings that the histogram is clipping here on the shadow side and clipping here on the, on the highlight side. Now that may not be a problem. So what we can do is if we actually click on those little triangles, it will show us exactly where the clipping is occurring. Now, if I switch that off again and zoom into the light and then switch it on, you can see that the clipping is actually occurring in the actual lights itself. It's very minor. If we zoom back, there's just a few bits and bits of clipping in the lights there. And if we do the same for the shadows, uh, you switch it on and you can see there's actually very, very little effect. So there's very little clipping in the shadows. So we're not going to worry too much about that. We can attempt to bring this highlights back very slightly. We probably won't be able to get it all back, but if we slide the whites back a little bit, we might be able to get some of that back. Not a great deal of difference there. So we're gonna live with that clipping highlights in the whites. It's not a major issue. If we bring the blacks up very slightly, you can see we've already reduced the black shadow clipping and that looks really good. So one last thing we're going to do is just add a little bit of vibrance to it. Vibrance affects only the less saturated colors. If I slide this all the way to the right, you can see that the less saturated colors come up much more than the already saturated colors. We don't want to go too far with it. It's, it's a more subtle tool than saturation, but it can also oversaturate an image very easily. The other thing to be aware of is that when we're working on an image, it's very easy to introduce noise in the shadow area. So if we quickly zoom in here, we can see that it's, uh, there's no noise in the shadow areas. This white mark here, this is known as a blown pixel, and that is quite a common thing on most cameras, and it often shows up in long exposure photography. We will deal with that in a moment. But for now, I think that looks pretty good. The next thing we're going to do is try and make that blue sky really punch out. Now the way we can make this sky really punch out is to actually use the HSL tool which is a little further down in the develop modules here. And as you can see we've got three tabs, hue, saturation and luminance. We also have a little magic tool like we have with the white balance, it's this one here. What we're going to do is we're going to change the hue of the sky very slightly to make it a deeper blue. So we click on this little adjustment tool here and we bring it over to the sky. We select an area that's quite blue. And if I slide down, you'll see it goes very, very green. If I slide up, it seems to add more blue and magenta to it. And if we do that, you can see that the sky has become a much richer blue than it was before. We can now increase the saturation of that sky again by using the same tool, but using the saturation tab and we'll just bring that saturation up. You can see that all that's affected is the blue sky. The saturation in the yellows of the Opera House are not caused any problems at all. So we'll bring that saturation up nicely like that, just very subtly. We don't want to introduce noise. If you hold space bar and then left click, you can zoom in on the sky just to check that you're not introducing noise. And in this case, we're not. So that looks pretty good. Now, I actually want to make this look even more dramatic than it was before. And I want to make the converging parallels even more converging. So if we head down to the transform tools down here, you see we've got the vertical transform tool. Now, ordinarily, this is used to correct converging parallels by moving it to the left. You can see if I do that, we actually bring all those parallels back to a straight but we want to exaggerate the parallels. So we're gonna bring it the other way like this. And as you can see, it gets much more dramatic. We don't want to clip out the left edge because that would kind of ruin our composition. So we don't go too far with it. As you can see, we now have a white border around the actual image. We can get rid of that by clicking on this constrained crop thing here, and that will actually crop the image down so that we've got rid of all the white borders around it. And that's looking pretty good, I think. 
Last thing we probably need to do is get rid of this blown pixel mark here. And to do that, we're going to zoom in and we're going to go to this tool here, which is the spot removal tool. If we click on that. If I drag my cursor over, you can see we've got a circular cursor here. And I can use my scroll wheel on my mouse to make that bigger or smaller. Now this dot is very, very small, so we can go for a small circular spot tool. And from here, we've got clone or heal. Now we're actually trying to heal this image, so we make sure that heal's selected. We position right over the top there, left click, and Lightroom will automatically select an area that it thinks is right for covering that up. And it's selected from up there. If we click done, you can see that's done a very good job of getting rid of that blown pixel. We zoom out and press the F key to see the whole thing full screen. You can see I think we've got a pretty good image there. That's certainly one that I wouldn't mind putting up on my living room wall. So now let's head over to our second image, the light trails image, and we can do that by going to the library module. And if we double click, that'll take us back to the grid view. You can see the five images of our shot here marked in blue. What we're going to do is we're going to do something slightly different. We're not going to do an HDR merge in Lightroom. We're going to move them over to Photoshop and we're going to merge the layers together in Photoshop. It won't be HDR, but what's actually merging layers in Photoshop does is it stacks all these light trails together and gives a really, really nice looking light trail effect in the image. The first thing we need to do though is to correct the color for all five images. And there's a quick and simple way that we can do that. We take our base image, which is the correct exposure, the midpoint of the bracket, and here it is here. We take that over into the develop module and we repeat the technique that we used in the previous video where we used the color picker in the white balance section. And we select a nice neutral part of the tarmac, for example, down here. And you can see instantly we've got this much more neutral looking shot. It's a little bit too neutral in my opinion. So we're going to add some yellow in the white balance here. If we bring that up, you can see it comes nicer and the white car trails become a little bit better as well. So around about there I think looks great. Now we're going to go back to the library module. And if we again double click on the full screen version, it will take us back to the grid view. What we're going to do is we're going to apply the corrections that we've done to this one to the other four images. So the correct exposure image selected, we right click on it, go to develop settings, and then we go copy settings. And you can see here we've got all the different potential settings that uh, we can copy. We've only done white balance, so we just select white balance and we click copy. We now click on the first one of our sequence, hold the shift button, click on the fourth to select the previous four images and we go right click, we go back down to develop settings and we go paste settings. And in a few moments that neutralizes those four other images so that they're at the same white balance as the fifth one. So we're now going to take these all over into Photoshop and what we do is once again we select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one and we've got all five selected. Right click on any of those five, go down to edit in and then we're going to open as layers in Photoshop. So we click on that and those will now open in Photoshop as layers. Now because they're raw files that may take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your computer. So we'll come back in a moment when they're all loaded in. So here we are, the five images all loaded into Photoshop on top of each other as layers. And if I click the little icon, we can actually switch them on and off at will. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select all of those layers. So you like we do in Lightroom, select the first one, hold shift, select the last one, and that's all five of the layers selected. We're now going to go to the blend mode, which is here, and we're going to click on that and we're going to go down to lighten. And you can instantly see that all those images merge together. So this is the blend mode in normal. It's like we're literally just seeing the top image. But if we go to the lighten mode, you can see all those car trails punching through and it looks really, really good, if a little bit light. So we'll click on lighten. And what we can do is we can actually select or deselect images to make the final image look the right exposure. So if we take this top one out, for example, we're actually only using four. We've still got really dramatic light trails, but we've actually got a lower exposure. 
The other option is that we can fade back the opacity on this top lightest layer. So if we select just the lightest layer at the top there and we click on opacity, we can bring back a little bit of uh, highlights and detail into the Opera House and still maintain those uh, really cool looking light trails. And I think that looks pretty good. You can play around with switching layers on and off to get the effect that you really want. And once you're happy with that particular image, you just go File, Save. And as that saves, we go back to Lightroom. And once it's saved, Lightroom will actually pop that image back up in its catalog, in the collection here. So we'll just wait for that to appear. So our image is now back in Lightroom. We can quickly check which one it is by checking the suffix of it. In this case, it's uh, edit.tiff. Now, Photoshop will either send your image back as a TIFF or as a PSD, depending on how you have Photoshop set up. I think by default, it actually sends it back as a PSD file. But in this case, it's a TIFF, and that's fine. So we're going to take this image over to the develop module. And the first thing we can see is because it's quite bright, we've got a lot of clipping in there. So we'll go back up to the Basics tab up here and we'll reduce the exposure until the Opera House looks really nice, natural looking exposure levels, which is about there. Now, as you can see, we have still got the clipping. So if we bring the highlights down very gently, all of a sudden we get rid of the clipping in the highlights and we've got a little bit of definition in the in the headlights of the cars and in the top of the Opera House lighting there. And I think that looks pretty good. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, bring up that sky like we did in the first image. And for that, we go down to the HSL tool and we're going to again click on Hue and we're again click on our little selector tool. And again, we're going to drag upwards until that sky becomes a slightly richer shade of blue. We're also going to make that sky look a little bit darker in this case. And to do that, we're going to use the luminance tool here and we're going to drag down on the blue. And as you can see, the sky gets a little bit darker and it punches that opera house out a little bit. We can go just a touch more. And finally, we'll add some saturation to that image. And there we go. Now, like in the previous shot, we're going to use the transform verticals tool but in this case, instead of exaggerating the, the verticals, we're going to try and correct them slightly. So we're going to slide the vertical tool to the left and that makes the Opera House look a little more natural. If we go too far, it looks quite obvious. But if we just go a little bit like that, we can reduce the converging parallels and make the shot look fairly natural. I also think that the horizon is possibly a little bit off. So if we go back up to the crop tool at the very top here and click on that, we have this angle tool. And if we click on the angle tool and find an area, a straight line within the building that is at around eye level, in this case, around about here, we've got this line at the front of the opera house. If we drag across and draw that line out, that will determine our straight horizon. And as you can see, I was right, we were slightly off. And now whilst we've got the crop tool open, we can just crop the image into a nice looking composition. And I think first of all, we'll get rid of this pedestrian crossing sign out of here. We also need to crop out the, the white areas at the bottom there. We can lose a little bit from the top. We've got a bit of sky up there. And I think if we come in from the right and bring the Opera House to the center, just like that, that looks pretty good. If we click on done, that looks fine. We've got some nice, beautiful light trails coming through the shot. We've got some light trails coming in from the other side. We've got the Opera House contrasting against the deep blue sky. And I think that's actually a really nice shot. We just have a quick look in full screen. There we go. That's a very nice shot. Again, one that you might want to hang on your wall. So here we are back in the library module of Lightroom and we have the two selected images from Istanbul, the two sequences, both five stop brackets. The first one is this uh, shot of the Hagia Sophia and this is the one where we used very long exposure times to try and get rid of people that are actually in the image. And we're going to use the same technique as the first shot in the Odessa Opera House in that we're going to merge them to HDR and we're going to use de-ghosting to try and get rid of some of those people. So we select the first, we select the last, and we right click and we go to photo merge 
HDR. We'll just wait for that to pop up. We already have deghosting on high, so we can see how effective that is once the preview comes up. And there we go. Now you see, with the deghosting on high, we still have some ghosting, which brings us back to actually playing around with the different settings. And it actually works out that if we have none selected, we get a better version, less people in the actual image than if we have the ghosting set to high. So in this particular case, we're going to go for deghosting set to zero, and we're going to merge. Now we'll just wait for that image to pop up. It'll take a little while to calculate. So if we double click on that, we're already looking a very nice, even without much color correction. Because of the very long exposure times, you can see there is some motion in the uh, actual trees and leaves here. Now, if we'd had ghosting on, that might have caused some very strange effects. Here, it kind of just looks like uh, the, there is some motion and wind in the sky, so it's not a major issue. And zooming back, it looks, uh, it looks very nice. So we'll head over to the develop module. There's not an awful lot we need to do to this. We'll check the histogram. You can see that the blacks are clipping, but there's no highlights clicking. So we'll see if we can bring the blacks up very slightly like that. And we'll do a color correction. And again, we know that this floor is fairly neutral. So if we just click on there, and you can see that's gone uh, not as nice as it could have been. So we'll just bring back the magenta slider in the white balance there and just play around a little bit with the temperature and I think that looks pretty good. So we've got a little bit of room on our whites. If we click on the triangle there you can see there's nothing clipping. If we increase the whites we'll increase the contrast very slightly. So we'll do that just until we're clipping and there we are. And uh, if we see we've got the triangle on we're not seeing very much just a little bit of extra clipping in the in the lights there. Now talking about the lights, we did mention that this was shot at f22 and as you can see we talked about if you're using very small apertures the lights can go into starburst effect and that's exactly what's happened here. So overall we don't really need to do an awful lot with this image. We're going to desaturate the mosque area a little bit and we're going to do that the same way as we saturate the sky. We're going to go to the HSL tool and we're going to click saturation. We're going to click on our little tool here and we're going to select a little bit in the mosque and just dial down that saturation very slightly. Not too far. We don't want it to go too unsaturated. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. We're going to do the same but increase the saturation in the sky. As you can see, we've got a little bit of ethereal looking clouds in the sky because of our very, very long exposures. So we're going to increase that a little bit saturation just to make those clouds punch out a little bit. And we're also going to play a little bit with the dehaze tool. That adds mid-tone contrast. So if we slide dehaze very, very carefully upwards, you can see the mid-tones in the sky are becoming a little bit dark, a little bit more contrast there. And we'll also add a little bit of clarity. And that's looking very, very natural. That's a nice looking shot. We still have this blown pixel. As you know, we can get rid of that using the spot tool. And we also noticed, if you look very carefully, you can see a little bit of sensor dust just there. So we'll also correct that. So we'll do the little pixel first. Select the spot heel tool. Nice small brush on that one. Click on it. And that's corrected. And now we'll make a bigger brush for this little mark here. And I will go here. That's sensor dust. And uh, it's something that we all get from time to time. And I can bigger brush just to cover that over and select there. If we click on done, we can see both those marks have gone. If we zoom out, uh, I think we've got a very nice looking image there. So for our final edit, we're going to return to this shot of the ferry in front of the Istanbul skyline. And we talked about how much definition we can get back from a single RAW rather than having to do with the HDR merge. And because this doesn't have a lot of highlights and shadows in it, it's a fairly neutral contrasting shot. We don't need to use the HDR merge on this. So you can see our five shot sequence here, and we're actually going to pick the lightest image and we're going to take that over to the develop module. And there you can see we have the image in the develop module. It's a little bit dark, it's lacking in uh, colour and it's lacking in vibrance, but we're going to change all that. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our exposure and we're going to bring the whole image of the whole histogram into the center. We just slide the exposure right and you can see that instantly we've brightened up that whole image. We've got no shadow clipping but we do have highlight clipping. But that's relatively minor. If we click that on, again, you will see that it's just the highlights in certain lights that are causing the, uh, the clipping. So we're not going to worry too much about that. We're now going to raise the shadows a little bit to see if we can bring a little bit more definition into the buildings. Now, when raising the shadows, as we've mentioned, you need to be careful that you're not introducing too much noise. So we've raised the shadows a little bit there. Now we're going to zoom in and we're just going to check for noise and you can see that it's looking pretty clean we're not going to worry too much about uh, noise in that particular shot so that's looking great already have a much better looking image we're now going to add a little bit of dehaze which is going to boost the mid-tone contrast if we bring it up very very slowly you can see we've lost a little bit of the shadow detail but we can increase the shadow detail to compensate for that and we've got a better contrast in the image now. And again, we will check for noise. A little bit of noise creeping into the sky, but not too much to worry about. So what we will now want to do is we want to make this sky punch out. And the way we're going to do that is to use a graduated mask. And that's this little tool here up on the right hand side. If we click on that, we're going to draw our graduation down to just about where the buildings are. So somewhere around there. And if we click on the show selected mask overlay, you'll see it shows exactly where the mask is. We're going to switch that off for the moment. What we're going to do in this grad is first of all, we're going to increase the color temperature to add a bit of yellowy red into the sky. If you go too far, it looks very unnatural. But, uh, we'll add a little subtle bit of color to the sky like that. We're also going to increase the clarity. That'll punch those clouds out a little bit in the sky. And we're going to change the hue of the sky a little bit. Just by sliding this little hue slider here. We can play around which way we want to go. If we go to the left, it comes a little bit more red. And I think that looks pretty good. And we'll just bump up the saturation of that sky. Now, one thing you will notice is what's actually happening as well is if I hold shift and zoom in, that graduated correction is also being applied to these minarets. So we can brush those out. And to do that, we select the brush tool and we go down to the bottom here and we select erase and we select auto mask. And we're going to zoom in and we're going to select a brush size that's suitable and we'll put our show selected mask overlay back on. And if you hold the space bar and click, you can drag the image around. So with a smaller brush, we select our minarets here and we literally paint over them to paint back in the original color of the minarets. So it'll take a little bit of while. So we'll carry on with this and I'll rejoin you once this is all done. So we've painted out all the areas of the mosque and the dome of the mosque and the minarets from the sky. And if we show selected mask overlay and click that off, and zoom back out, we can now see that the minarets look more natural and the dome looks more natural, but we still have this beautiful sort of orange color in the sky. And we'll just zoom in a little bit onto that mask and check. You can see there's some noise that's been introduced. That's been caused by the clarity and dehaze and uh, the saturation. So because it's only the sky, we're going to add some noise reduction. We take the noise reduction, slide that to the right, and we get rid of that noise. Um, we don't have any noise in the rest of the image. So what we've done is balance that noise out really nicely now. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a similar graduated mask, but not to the sky, to the water. We just want this water to punch out a little bit more, but we also want to make it less clear. So we've got this ethereal look. We talked about the four second exposure to kind of get the ethereal look in the water, and we're just going to enhance that a little. So we'll click on done to clear that particular graduated mask on the sky. We'll return to that same graduated mask. And we'll just drag up from the bottom only a little bit just to the bottom of the boat there and that looks fine at the moment my exposure is set high so the mask is actually making the water look lighter so we'll just double click on exposure to reset that back to normal we're going to 
change the color very slightly. We're going to make it a little bit more blue by changing the color temperature down. If I slide it all the way, it goes way too unnatural. But we'll find a nice natural looking blue to contrast the yellows in the uh, lights of the ferry there. I think that looks very good. And we're going to take our clarity slider and reduce clarity. And that will give the effect of desharpening, if you like, the actual water. And that looks pretty good. If we click on done, I think we've got a really nice looking image there. And if we just go back to the develop module and look at it compared to one of the other images, bring up the two together there, you can see from a single image, even from a single image, you can get an amazing blue hour shot. And that looks really, really nice. So in this video, we've covered quite a great deal of how to edit blue hour shots. We've learned how to merge HDR brackets, we've learned how to get great light trails by stacking shots in Photoshop, and we've also learned how to edit a single blue hour image to enhance the sky and the water and make the whole image look great without having to merge it in HDR. For your homework, if you've not yet shot your blue hour images, I have provided the Odessa Opera House RAWs for you to practice with. If you have already shot a good blue hour sequence, then it's time to create a stunning shot using Lightroom or Photoshop. In the last video of this series, we'll summarize everything that we've done during the course, and we'll look at how you can get feedback from me through the forums at Night Stalking. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I really hope that you've got something out of how to edit in Photoshop and Lightroom, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.